Hey everybody, Cody here at Red Gable Homestead. We were just at the post office and picked up our broiler chicks. about 80 of them that we're going to raise for our meat chickens and then we sell a few here and there. So I'm going to get these out, put them in their new home. chicks. They seem to be nice and happy and healthy. I just want to show you a few, few of the things that we use here. Um, I use two heat lamps partly for the amount of space that it's heating and also just in case one of the bulbs would burn out at least there's still one heat lamp left. But with this many chicks um, it's good to have two of them so they've got plenty of space to congregate underneath them. The other thing is I want to show you my feeder here. This is the feeder that I use for when they start out with chicks and as they get older and they're out on the pasture uh, it works great to be able to hang it up keeps it off the ground uh, when i'm moving them out on the pasture and eventually i'll show you how i do that but there's no reason to use a nice cutesy little feeder and with the chicks even when they're small they can eat out of that just fine that way i don't have to buy more stuff i am using a smaller water thing here a drinker just because they can drown in the bigger ones I only have one. I need to go get another one for this many chicks. So I'm not going to do that yet. You can kind of see about the size of the brooder space that I'm giving them. I've got a divider in here. So this room here is 5 by 10. And so right now it's cut in half. So it's about 5 by 5. And once they get a little bit bigger, I'll open up that partition and let them be able to use this whole space. And they'll stay in this brooder until they're about 3 weeks old. And after that, they'll be moved out on pasture where they can get all the good grass and bugs and be happy, healthy chickens. The next step for these birds is to get them moved out on pasture. I'm planning to do that today, so I hope to get some footage of that and show you how we do that. Get them moved from in here to our broiler pen that gets moved around on the pasture, and can't wait to show you that as well.
All right, we've got all of the broiler chicks out here now. I just wanted to show you a little bit of my broiler pen that I use to keep my broilers on pasture. It is a nine by 13 pen and I've got about 75 birds in here. So that gives them about one and a half square feet per bird. For right now, obviously you can see there's plenty of space in here. Once they start getting really big, it might start getting a little tight, but it'll be just fine. I just want to show you how I, what I did with this pen here. Basically it's got an aluminum frame at the bottom and you can see the conduit pipes that are the supports for the sides and the roof. That's three quarter inch conduit. And then I used self tapping screws to screw the metal on the outside. I've got some aluminum pieces going across here to hang the feeders and waters on. That is one thing that has really, really helped. I used to use like more of a Southern style pen that was only like two feet tall. And I would just set my feed and water on the ground in there. But it was a real pain because I had to pick it up, take it out every single time I wanted to move the chickens. But this way I hang it in here so I can just move the pen and the feed and water comes right along with it. I'm gonna take you on the outside and show you how it gets moved. All right, so like I mentioned, I did used to use more of a Salatin style pen that was only like two foot tall. And I did come up with a modified design for that that did work really great. And I liked it fairly well. The biggest thing that I didn't like is that I could not physically go inside of it myself to catch the birds, take care of the birds, feed the birds, things like that. Um, that was kind of a pain that it was only two feet tall, couldn't get in there. So that's why I built this one. You can see on the outside here, the conduit with the metal screwed to the top of it. And basically there is a hook on each side of it and a strap on it to pick up the front end and pull it. It's pretty light and easy to move. I'll take you around the back to show you the wheels on the back. So here is my wheel apparatus on the back. I'm not sure that I want to lift it up right now. These chicks just got put in there. They won't be very much used to it. I don't want to scare them too much. But basically this thing here, you push it down, which lifts the, the whole pen up and you stick this pin in here and hold it in place and then you're able to pull it really easily then you just let it back down and you can see all the boards that i've got sticking in on the sides here i'm out in my pasture right now which is not very even because of the cows tromping around and stuff and so i just carry around a bucket of little scrap two by fours and just put it in all the places where there's holes where either the chicks could get out or where predators could get in
take 57. Hey everybody, I'm out here with our broiler chicks. They've been out here on pasture for about a week now. And I just thought I'd go over a few things, tell you about what we do and how we've taken care of some issues that we've had in the past. First of all, we get our chicks from Meyer Hatchery. It's a hatchery in Ohio. We get them through the mail as day old chicks. And we get them in the early spring so that we're butchering them in the summer. We keep ours for about nine to 10 weeks because we get the Rainbow Rangers. We really like the Rainbow Rangers. They've done really well for us. I know a lot of people raise the Cornish Cross, the white birds that you most often see. Um, those grow out really fast, seven to eight weeks. But I just never really like the idea of raising those. They gross me out a little bit. They actually just, they get so fat. As they get a little older, they will just sit by the feeder even while they're out on pasture and they'll just eat feed all day long. The other thing with those, you gotta be a lot more careful with how you raise them. You have to have them on feed for 12 hours and take them off for 12 hours or they will eat too much. They end up with heart attacks and leg problems because they get so fat they can't support themselves. The Rainbow Rangers, we found to be pretty simple to raise. We really like them. We really like the quality of the bird at the end. They are super tasty. Not that squishy chicken stuff that you get from the grocery store. We raise about 50 of them for ourselves. We've got a batch of about 80 birds here. And what we'll do is we'll keep 50 of them for ourselves then we'll sell the others to maybe make a little money and pay for raising them. So now I'll go over a few of the issues that we've had in the past. I had, had intentions of getting some footage of different issues as they came along from the time that we got them started in the brooder till they were out on pasture. But we actually didn't have any issues this time. In the past, we've usually had batches of about 50 to 60 birds and we usually have at least a few of them would die, sometimes more. This time we had a batch of 80 and not a single one died, which is really great. So we figured a few things out and we'd like to tell you about that now. First of all, one of the main things that you'll deal with with chicks is something called poopy butt or pasty butt. Basically what it is is that they will get diarrhea and it will get stuck to their backside and it will cover up their vent. It will turn into a hard clump and it will make sure that they can't poop. Obviously that's not a good thing and that will make them go downhill really fast. Sometimes even if you get them over it, get them past it, the ones that have had it for a bit will stay small and they won't grow as well as the others. Um, and then if you let it go too long, they will start dying off pretty fast. So it's something that you want to take care of as quickly as possible. So first of all, if it does happen, what you want to do is you want to get that clump off of their backside as soon as possible so that they can continue moving regularly. And the way to do that is instead of just ripping it off, rip their feathers off, hurt them and stuff like that, is take out a small dish of warm water and it's a little gross so maybe you want to put on some latex gloves and just take the chick and dip its backside into that little dish of warm water and that'll soften up the poop and then you can pull it off without hurting them. Really the best thing to do is prevention. So a few things that we do for prevention is in their water to start off with from day one and throughout all the way up until processing is I put apple cider vinegar with the mother in their water. That is really good for their digestion. It really helps to keep them healthy and we felt like that has really helped us out a lot. The other thing that we do to help their digestion get them some really good probiotics is feeding them yogurt or kefir. That really helps if they're looking a little sickly to get them back on their feet and doing well. In general, poopy butt or pasty butt just comes from stress and that can come in a number of different ways. And one of the main ways that we have seen that is the brooder being too warm. When you're looking up what temperature to have your brooder at, often what you read is to have it at 90 degrees from day one. And as they get a little older, you go down in temperature, so on and so forth. Um, and that is good advice in that you want to give them that 90 degree temperature, but you don't want the whole brooder to be 90 degrees. So you saw in the first part of our video, the brooder that we have, I have two heat lamps in there to give them that warm spot to be under, but the rest of the brooder, you want to keep a little cooler. And we like to keep it at about 70 degrees, maybe a little less, maybe a little more than that. But once it starts getting up to about 80 degrees, that is just getting too warm for the whole brooder and that can cause issues pretty fast. So we try to keep it cooler. If it starts getting up to 80 degrees, we will open up some vents. If it's a warm day, we'll turn off one or both of the heat lamps. So we wanna keep them, wanna give them that nice warm spot, but don't want the whole thing too warm. The other thing that causes stress is then being too cold. So if you have too much ventilation going on, you have not enough heat lamp space, your heat lamps go out, something like that, that'll stress them and obviously cause problems too. The other thing is them being dehydrated. Make sure you keep lots of good, clean water in their pan at all times. A couple of the other issues we've had is them getting suffocated. So if they are too cold, often they will huddle together in a tight bunch or huddle together in corners. And those ones in the middle can get suffocated and that can cause your chicks to die. And the other thing is that they can drown in their water sometimes. So as you saw in the first part of our video, I used a small one gallon drinkers for them to drink out of when they're very small. And then later on, we use these bigger ones here, these three and a half gallon drinkers. And those work really great out here so they can hang up and when I move my pen, it moves right along with it. 
but those have a pretty deep pan on the outside and chicks can drown in that. I've seen some people put some rocks in that little pan on the outside and that could work pretty good, but I just like to use the smaller waters to begin with to keep them from falling in and drowning. The other thing that we've had that has caused issues is having too much light. So I thought I had a really great idea to raise our chicks in more like a little greenhouse so that if they were getting natural warmth and sunlight and things like that. And it turned out that it wasn't such a great idea. We had chicks dying off pretty quick one time and we looked it up and found that too much light is not good for them. So I had had, like you saw in our brood of the patio doors on the outside and the roof was clear plastic. And so they were just getting tons of light in there and it was just too much for them. So I put metal on that roof this year and left the patio doors how they were and that seemed to work great. It's some natural light is really good, but just too much, it was just too much light and that made them get sick. So before I go, I'll tell you about the feed that we use. It is a non-GMO feed and to start them off, when we first get them, we use a 21% protein feed and then once they're about three weeks old, we switch them over to a 19% protein feed. And one thing with animals, you never want to just bam switch them from one feed to another. You want to do that gradually. So what I do usually around three weeks is I will start switching them over. I will do about half of the 21%, half of the 19%, do that for a few days and get them switched over to the 19%. And that's what they will eat for the rest of their time until the date of processing. Mm -hmm.